Well, hello there, YouTube. I'm Dave. What up? And I'm Jacob. And today we've got a pair of new Gigabyte and Asus laptops here sporting the latest in NVIDIA's mobile graphics game. We're pitting them against each other to see whether you should be going for the standard silicon or the Max-Q design of NVIDIA's new RTX 2070 graphics chips for your next gaming laptop. So yes, it's Gigabyte's gorgeous Aero 15 versus Asus's partially camouflaged Strix Scar 2. Fight! They're not going to fight. Not everything's tacking. NVIDIA has brought its RTX technology into the mobile world, bringing us the first gaming laptops able to offer real-time ray tracing on the go. Which is important, honest, and we're not going to do it down for only being available in two games and one benchmark. It's the future of PC graphics. Probably. Eventually. Yeah, but aside from that, the mobile Turing architecture also brings the AI power of NVIDIA's Tensor cores, as well as the ray tracing focused RT cores. And with the deep learning super sampling support largely negating the performance impact of ray tracing, our future robot overlords really are here improving our games. The early examples of DLSS in game haven't necessarily been that well received, however, with complaints about its Vaseline image quality. But DLSS is improving as Nvidia's hive mind deep learns the shit out of those latest games. And with the most recent Metro Exodus patch, it's far sharper and still delivers the all important performance increases too. When we're talking purely about the GPUs inside these two laptops, there is no actual difference between the desktop and mobile iterations of the NVIDIA TU-106 Silicon. That's something NVIDIA introduced with the Pascal generation of GPUs, and Turing is carrying that on. They use the same number of cores and the same amount of next-gen GDDR6 memory. Where the difference exists is in the amount of energy they use and the subsequent clock speed the GPUs run at. Therein lies the beauty of the Max-Q design, and that's what allows NVIDIA to get its top chips into such slimline laptops as the Gigabyte Aero 15. The Max-Q design sacrifices some of its power to enable consistent, quiet gaming at a slightly lower clock speed, but it's also been created from a more holistic design point. That means both from a thermal and a power delivery point of view. As such, this Aero 15 uses the RTX 2070 Skimmed Milk Max-Q Design GPU, and the chunkier ASUS Strix SCAR 2 has the more traditional full-fat option. Yeah, this Aero 15 has a Core i9 CPU running at 3.7GHz, though it's still a 6-core chip as opposed to the 8-core processors of the desktop Core i9s. It's also got 32GB of dual-channel DDR4 and a 1TB SSD and a lovely AUO 4K panel too. The ASUS Strix SCAR 2 is a more modest build compared with the super high-end Gigabyte machine. It has a Core i7 CPU running at 3.6GHz, but still with 6 cores and 12 threads, 16GB of DDR4, a 512GB SSD, and a 1TB hard drive. In terms of the screen, it's sporting a 1080p panel with a 144Hz refresh rate. Slick! Price-wise, there is a big disparity between these two specs. This Aero 15 is around £3,300, while the SCAR 2 is around £2,000. But you can still spec an Aero 15 with the same 2070 GPU as these two, but with a 1080p 144Hz panel and a Core i7 CPU. That build will cost £2,300, which is more financially comparable between the two. The original idea for the Max-Q design was to be able to run thin and light laptops with seriously powerful GPUs, but only sacrifice around 10% of the standard chip's actual gaming performance through thermal, clock speed, and energy delivery tweaks. So how does that scan with our testing of these two RTX 2070 machines? Well, the standard RTX GPU in the ASUS is quite obviously faster, and here it's measurably by more than the 10% delta the Pascal generation worked to. Only Far Cry 5 offered something along the original lines, with just a 9% difference between their 1080p performance. That's 77 FPS on the Max-Q Aero 15, and 84 FPS on average with the SCAR 2 standard RTX 2070. The 3 d Mark benchmarks, both TimeSpy and the ray tracing enabled Port Royal tests, show a still very reasonable 13-14% to difference. The 70 FPS versus 81 FPS difference with Battlefield 5 adds up to a 16% delta between them, which again is tolerable, but when you turn on the ray tracing pretties, that changes. Even with DLSS on, and supposedly functional at 1080p on an RTX 2070, there is a far bigger gap between the Max-Q and standard RTX 2070 GPUs. There, the frame rate drops by a third, and it's a similar story with Metro Exodus 2. Using standard rendering, there is a 31% difference in gaming performance, though that does drop to only 26% when both cards are ray tracing the game. In simplistic terms, the Max-Q 2070 GPU is running at a lower frequency than its standard brethren, 
but there are other things that work in there, which all allows it to operate in a tighter space and around the same temperature as the standard GPU. That's the promise of Nvidia's Max-Q design, with something as sleek as the Aero 15 being able to squeeze one of the top GeForce GPUs inside it, with the same silicon as its desktop counterpart, is still impressive. It may be a touch slower, but it's a hell of a lot more mobile than trying to drag around a standard gaming laptop. Which is exactly what the SCAR 2 is. It's not massive, but has a thicker design, which allows its GPU to run quicker and your games to perform better, but it's not that mobile. And it's loud too. Part of the Max-Q design is about acoustic specs, and while the Aero 15 can get quite chatty, it's not as loud as the you'll be ejected from the quiet carriage on the train Zeus machine when you're gaming at full speed. Yeah, you might have higher frame rates, but is it worth the embarrassment? We're British, so the answer is no. Nothing is ever worth the embarrassment. In the end then, the Max-Q design of the RTX 2070 is a gaming sacrifice, and seemingly more so in this latest Turing generation but it still provides a huge amount of performance in a small, relatively quiet package. We're actually big fans of both these machines. We've always loved the Gigabyte Aero 15 design. Indeed, we use one as our mobile video editing rig for shows, because they've got some great productivity chops too. And the ASUS Strix SCAR 2 is a lovely laptop itself. It may be a little chunkier, but the screen is fantastic with an impressively slim bezel, and if you're not going to be traveling with it too much, the extra performance will be worth the extra heft. So that's it, we're done. Thanks for watching, and if this is your first taste of PC Games N in video form, give us a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and come back for more techie and gamey goodness, both here and on the website. Goodbye. Bye.